Star Trek 57, M23, take two. It's the It's Got Star Trek podcast. She's aware of my feelings toward her, but the truth is... She prefers Shakar. Who? The first minister of Bajor. He's a leader, a hero, a man with great charisma. I don't care if he's JFK. It's not the other guy you have to worry about. It's you. Me? That's right. I mean, for starters, you've got to lose this whole Nanook of the North thing. I, I, I don't understand. Well, I mean, you got about as much personality as an icicle. Cool is one thing, but you're frozen solid. You think I have no emotions? Believe me, I do. I just don't always show them. And therein lies the problem. Come with me. Where to? Look, Pally, you want to win the girl? We got to thaw you out a little bit. You know, turn up the heat. Get those emotions you claim to have bubbling to the surface. It's time to have some fun. What does fun have to do with Major Kira? I'll pretend I didn't hear that. All right, so I think then... I think we've done all of our pre-show business, so that means we can continue to the on show. to the actual show. I'm down with that. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, we'll start the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, the It's Got Star Trek podcast. It's a got Star Trek. The It's Got Star Trek podcast. Mm-hmm. That is the name of the podcast program mm-hmm. that people are listening to. That's Dan. amazing. It is. It is indeed. It's very amazing. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> uh, the uh, peculiar thing this week is that our release date, we release these episodes on Mondays, mm-hmm. and it ha- just so happens to fall on December 25th, mm. which is I Christmas. I've heard that's a major holiday. It is a major holiday in some, uh, some, people. We- in some parts of the Western sphere of influence. A bit. Uh, uh, a bit. Yeah, so it's kind of a thing. We aren't doing a Christmas episode per se, uh, but I thought it useful to note that this is being recorded and released. This is being released on Christmas, so it can't help but be a Christmas episode. Well, we're going to include a few Christmas surprises. Everything gets devoured by Christmas. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> we'll put a, we'll pop in a few Christmas surprises along the way as we discuss the main topic, which Christmas will be Star Trek: Deep Space Nine's His Way, Season Six, Episode Twenty, His Way. Hey, doll face. That is the episode we will be discussing. <laughs> but first, let's do some Christmas Christmas fun. Chris, Chris, yes. Christ them up. Then we'll have some Christ them up. Yeah, let's do some Christ them up. That's right. Oh, that's uh, unfortunate. And then uh, news them ups. <laughs> news them ups. We got a voicemail. Et cetera. We got we got a bunch of stuff. So let's just get going. Okay. Uh, Why? So, <laughs> so first, I thought, Why? I, I thought, hey, you know what? Why? Uh, what? How can we how can we combine uh, Star Trek and Christmas? Two things that don't generally go together. A what? In in the Star Trek universe, I mean, it's basically never mentioned. That's uh, true. But uh, just just on the other side of the Star Trek universe, on and on our side of that universe, uh, people do all sorts of crazy fun stuff, including making Star Trek Christmas parody songs. It's time to have some fun. It is. So I thought, <laughs> I thought, well, I just picked a few of these. There's a million of them out there and you should all check them out. But I, I'll play a few of these throughout the episode, starting with a little song by James Covenant. See if you can guess the title. Oh, the weather outside is frightful. Something. But the fire is so delightful. Make it so. And yes. set uh, you know, uh, it whoa. to go. Whoa. Make it so. Where? Make it so. Make Hold it on, so. Jesse. <laughs> Ma'am, it doesn't show signs. That's pretty good, Jesse. Thank you. And I brought me some this tea. This is silly, but it charmed me. The light uh, turned way hit. down below. Make it so. Make it so. Make it so. <laughs> When we finally kiss. Good night. <laughs> How I hate going out in the storm. <laughs> but if you... Really? Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> All the way home, I'll be... Warm. 
Oh, the fire is slowly dying. <laughs> dying. My dear. We're still goodbye, men. But as long as you love me, so make it so. Make it so. Make it so. I have the other people say it. Okay. That's amazing. <laughs> that was silly. No. Very silly. But it was also amazing. Yeah. Uh, again, that was by, um, who was that by? Um, make it so. That was by James Covenant. How'd you know that? I, it, because it said so on the YouTube on the YouTube page. It's a pretty old one. I think that was from like ten years ago. I'll have the links for I'll have the links for all of these. Uh, we'll put the links for all of these in the uh, in the show description. So. What's that supposed to mean? It means they can follow if they go to the show description, either on the podcast player or on YouTube. <laughs> they can click on the link and they can go see the YouTube video of these songs. That's amazing. I mean, it's just hypertext protocol. You're familiar. Whatever with, makes you happy. You're, you're you're familiar with hypertext something protocol, tra- hypertext transfer protocol. Is that what HTTP stands for? My thoughts exactly. All right, all right. I get it, Dan. I get it, Dan. Okay. Anytime, pal. All right. Anytime. Well, we'll have a few more of those uh, Christmas treats along the way. Oh, don't stop on my account. Uh, but uh, first, mm. um, oh yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, no, we don't really have any news ups this this week, other than saying, uh, what? You know, uh, a lot of people are going to be celebrating on the, on the day this uh, this uh, podcast comes out. A lot of people, won't, whether you're celebrating, not celebrating, it's all good. It's yeah. uh, have a good time. It doesn't really matter. You should have. We we wish for people to have a good time every each and every day of the year. Oh, that's every day is Christmas. <laughs> yes, every every day is Christmas. Isn't that a Monty Python song? Oh no, that's Christmas yeah, in Heaven. Yeah. yeah. It's Christmas, it's Christmas, it's Christmas in Heaven. Yeah. Hip, 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 hooray. You, you know don't that? have to be an Einstein to clue into any of that. Every single day. Yeah, you're right. In the song, it says it there, there, is there. Christmas Day. And then they do some disco thing yeah. at the end. Yeah. It's Christmas, it's Christmas, it's Christmas. That movie is off the hook. Monty Python and the Meaning of Life. Christmas in Heaven. All right, we've gone off track a little bit. Yeah. So no news and ups. But we do have a voicemail em up that I wanted to play, and that is from Khaki from the Joy of Trek podcast. So let's hear what Khaki has to say. Hi, Dan, Jesse, Patrick. This is Kaki from The Joy of Trek, a Star Trek podcast that, in the words of Dan, it's jacked up like a thing, man. (laughs) I've really been enjoying your show since I was introduced to it. I love your friendship. And when I grow up, I want to be just as cool as the three of you. Now, Patrick, in the last episode, you posed a really, really interesting question. You asked whether Q had planned to introduce the Borg from the start, the or whether that was on a whim. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's a really, really great question, because looking back <laughs> on his conduct, <laughs> in particular with Picard and the crew of the Enterprise, I'm completely convinced that Q loves humanity in general and, and, and Picard in the specific, and that when he chooses to show up, it's to teach our heroes lessons that they really, really need. Because in, in, in retrospect, even though it costs some lives, to uh, encounter the Borg when they did, that did mean that Starfleet was able to prepare by mm-hmm. the time that the Borg actually sort of showed up. Because at the time, like they were, they were already sort of encroaching on the on the neutral zone. You know, there was those the foreshadowing of those uh, colonies vanishing and the experience of the Romulans, but also later in Tapestry, right uh, when he gave Picard his his "It's a Beautiful Life" and mm. all good things, and even encounter at Farpoint. Every time he's trying to teach them something really, really important that they need to learn in order to in order to flourish. And what's particularly fascinating is that he tries to do it in a way that they believe that they do it himself. He he sets himself up yeah. as this imp. He's capricious. Tricky. He's powerful and and cruel. And in spite of his sort of vindictive pettiness, our heroes find a solution to their problems. You know, like in uh, in, in all good things which he was really trying to teach them. Anyway, sorry, he cares so much about about teaching people that he doesn't care whether they appreciate him for it, which I think is a really fascinating character. Anyway, uh, I've gone over the 90 seconds. Pardon me. <laughs> uh, love the show. Uh, hugs and kisses. Again, this is Kaki from The Joy of Trek. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, Dan, oh. I'm so intrigued by question, your question for process you. for creating these uh, sound bites and, and ah. your whole, like, how do you... 
I, I can take my answer off the air. You know, that's that's <laughs> that's also fine. I just kind of want to know, like, how do you get your clips? How do you select them? How do you set up this library and and, and, and play them to everyone's, literally everyone's delight every week? Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Bye. D- love you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> to everyone's delight. Catch you later, baby. <laughs> um, well, that was a great uh, voice voice message. How w- first question is how did how was he able to go beyond the ninety seconds? Because I thought there was actually like a, a because a restriction because okay that that like beyond our control. Each and every week we explain this, but I think I fear we there's something getting lost in 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 the communication at least between me and Dan. <laughs> we, I don't think you've ever explained this <laughs> because uh, what I've tried to get across is that. The tool that we have on the website on www.itsgotstartrek.com slash record. That is a handy tool for people who wish to record a message to us. Right. The limitations of that specific right. I tool knew that. I knew that part. are 90 seconds because we don't want to pay for the right. extended I, version. I know that part. Now, <laughs> separately, that tool is one of multiple means by which somebody could record their voice okay. and transfer it digitally to yes, us. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that sentence, you see went, you see, that you sentence see where went, you're going? That sentence went on like five seconds too long. But yes, I see where you're going. It's all part of my charm. <laughs> so, <laughs> what Kaki has done is he has recorded the the audio of his voice. And sent it in an MP3 format oh, I didn't or some that. similar format directly via email uh, versus using the tool, okay. which is a perfectly cromulent thing to do, mm-hmm. right? right? We are limited in the tool that only records up to 90 seconds, but if you want to send in, send us an hour and well, who knows? We'll see. <laughs> Maybe we'll just sit there and live comment <laughs> on an hour-long message, but... Uh, anyway, thank you very much. Yeah, um, that was a great. That was a great, and I love the love. I love. I love you too. Uh, yes, I love I, the love I, as I well. Love. I love and miss you. Uh, all. I lo- miss you already. A uh, Joy of Trek is a great podcast that is worth checking out. People who enjoy this here podcast, the It's Got Star Trek podcast, I think will also yes, enjoy yeah. the Joy of Trek because they have a similar humor, hmm. I think, and mm. they also jump around the universe. You know, from different episodes mm. to different episodes. So jump around the oh. universe. <laughs> hey, jump, jump, jump around. Well, Kaki, thank you again for that that wonderful voicemail. Yeah. Now, what, what about your? You, do you have? Do you want to reveal any of your secrets? Any yeah, of your, I mean, it's basically you get like a bucket of sounds and you just sort of slurp your hand into the bucket, the digital bucket, and scoop them out. I'll try to go through this quickly as I can. Oh, this just, is, oh good. Because there's several steps to involve the whole process. So first, I watch the episode. Just watch it, and that's. Yeah. For, for general watch watching watches watching watches and then uh and i don't and then i, don't, I watch you watch then you just, just watch <laughs> yeah, we jesse watch <laughs> I wa- <laughs> Jesse likes to watch. I like to watch Dan. He likes to watch The Watcher. It's like post, I like to collect. Sw- I like to collect Squatch watches. Mm, you all remember watch. Squatch watches? Yes, the I swatch do. Swatch. You used to love those. Um, still do. <laughs> still do. I don't know if you own any though. I I own them. I just don't wear them because I have a digital fancy watch with digital stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's giving up. There's a funny noise. <laughs> <laughs> the funny noise is Jesse opening his snack. Okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> well, we got to talk about his that way. Was, but yeah. first, we want to hear a little bit about Dan's audio process. So Dan so, watches the television program. I watch it. I just watch it. I mean, feel free to omit any steps that you think might be <laughs> fucking obvious. <laughs> I, well, I'm just saying, first, I so you just watch to, it. Because, no, this is important the order, I tell you. <laughs> I, I can appreciate this. I first, appreciate first it. I, I just watch it, like, no notes or anything. Okay. Then the next time, I watch it again. The second Second time with closed captioning on, captioning on, and that's when I take my notes. And those are notes about things I notice about the episode, and I like hear little bits of sound that I think might be interesting. Mm. And so I mark the time down basically. And that process takes like a lot longer because like I'm pressing, you know, jump back ten seconds a whole bunch to try to sort of, you know, you have to keep jumping back. It gets get them it, time codes. Yeah, get them time mm. codes. Um, and so I just little things that. And after I, I've done it for a while, that's certain insane. certain like when people speak, like sometimes. Like, like the the like the beat they speak at or like the the, the melody like their the tones and melodies that their voice uses in natural speech mm. it's like the more one listens to it the more that one sort of like starts noticing that kind of thing mm. um i think and that just comes from like doing it over and over again but yeah and then i try to pick like conversational things you know like that's amazing or hello or my thoughts exactly or oh no stop on my account <laughs> or, or how the hell did you get in here? Or right. things that are rhythmic, and you can do like yeah. you can start looping them and make beats. Yeah, yeah. And that's it's just- terrific. It's terrific. It's terrific. 
Based it's terrific, your, uh, it's terrific, 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 catch you later, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that one is, I just love the sound of this one. Catch you later, baby. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that you've recorded a few of the things that jumped out at me, this one, auditorily and otherwise. This was this just, episode. this was just one, all, um, one string of thing pe people were saying, I didn't cut this at all. Thanks, Doc. Wonderful. Very nice. That's like pretty beady. Thanks, Doc. Wonderful. Very nice. Whoops. Thanks, Doc. Wonderful. Very nice. Thanks, Doc. Wonderful. Very nice. Doc. Wonderful. Very nice. Doc. Wonderful. Very nice. Doc. Wonderful. Very nice. Don't we normally save this for later? Oh yeah. Well, okay. Well, I guess that was part of my process is trying to explain. I still think it's cool. Yeah. Okay. And so anyway, moving on. And then I basically just go into Audacity and I I go through the time codes and I pull them out. And then I have to like upload. I'm not like an Apple person, but I do have an iPad, so I upload them to the iCloud, and then I pull them off onto my iPad mm. because the iPad is actually pretty useful for this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Then I then I set it. Then I pull pull all the sounds into the iPad, and then I go through and tag them all different colors depending on like like green is like sort of like general sort of like conversational or, or useful things in. A, conversation i was gonna say in a conversation but it's the same thing purple I've, mm. and these these colors have developed over time like purple is is, is episode specific stuff that's not necessarily mm. conversational um like collection of photons and force fields like that's not really conversational it's you could do it but it's not that easy and then um mm. and then i do like pink for beat uh some other oranges, peach for sounds, red for music. What if something falls into one more than one category? That is a very good question, Patrick. Thank you for asking that. Generally, I'm fascinated by this color thing. Yeah, generally speaking, if they fit into two categories, uh, the green, which is the conversational stuff, it generally usually falls to the mm. green because, like, if it's episode related and conversational, I'll generally put it in the green. Do you sort them by color or by alphabet? Uh, color. Oh, okay. well, I sort them by color. So color then alphabet. Well, color then what I think goes together. I have a different process See, now, for that. This is really informative. <laughs> and, yeah, just and an eye opening, yeah. I shall say, because. I've glanced at the screen and I really try not to, you know, get in your face and read your shit. <laughs> no, you can look at my, you, I mean, but, you can but look I've at seen him. these colors and, I know I'm, I and, I'm, and, and I wonder like, what's up with the colors? And now I know. Well, yeah. I really want to know, are the colors, are they basically arbitrary or is there some sort of <clears throat> synesthesia involved? Um, are, they, are you a synesthete? Well, when I started, you know what I'm saying? when I started this, I had no I or organization system really at all. And it just kind of naturally formed. And those are the colors that just kind of happened to cluster. Did for you whatever reason. self initiate synesthesia connected to these colors? Not, so that, do you feel something physical? Do you no. Do you see wavy lines or anything? No, I, no, I don't. Does purple smell a certain <laughs> no, way? No, it's not that. Purple smell. I didn't, I did I, they're, they didn't even actively choose them. They just started to form. And then I noticed that, oh. They chose you. Uh, yeah, because then I noticed like, oh, for some reason, the conversational stuff mostly tends to be green. And then I started making it green. And then yeah. green used to be the only color I had. But then slowly purple found itself. And I, as to why it's purple, I don't know, it just fucking worked out that way. And then I used brown. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah. And then I used brown. Brown is like extra special things that I want to approach. Like if there's a 20 second clip that I want to talk about or something like that. Or if there's a little joke thing that I'm trying to put into play where I play a sound and then I follow it up with like a, a music clip or something like that. Uh -huh. Those are sort of extra bonus kind of kind of things. And the ones I don't put any color to are just kind of like, those usually are the least important. I find I just really can't, I, I, I took them down, but I couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do with them. Mm. So I just kind of kept them at the top. And then I go through it again extra bonus. to organize each color within the colors. And that's kind of like with the purple, I kind of group it by character mostly, but not always, mostly by character. Green though, I start from, most positive to least positive. So at the top, <laughs> wait, 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 what do you mean by positive? Well, I'm I'm about to explain okay. it. Okay. Oh no! <laughs> Sorry, so folks. So we should okay. so we should listen to what right. you have to say. Folks, we will be getting to his way soon enough, but this is fascinating. Yeah. So Jesse Jesse is not wrong. We sit here and watch this process happen, but we don't see his screens. No. We it just is magic to us, and so mm -hmm. this is I'm fa I'm really in interested in this. Uh, organization okay you're about to explain we had no idea which definition of positive you're yeah. referring to so i, I mean like and, and i also want to know about the directionality of positivity okay 
That's an interesting question. Because you've just implied it yeah. with your organization. So, okay. So when, when I, the first, the upper, up into the uppermost to the leftmost, going to the right, you know, down, you know, down like a reading, like you're reading a book. Um, okay. The first one, it starts with like super positive, like yes. Reading yes, a book in English. Yes is the most positive word. And then there's words like, um, thank you. And then there's words like. That's amazing. Well, those are two words, but you know, you know, like then, then it starts, that's amazing. And then later on, it might be like. Like, whatever makes you happy see that's kind of positive but it's also kind of like eh, you know so that's less it's a spectrum of positive to negative <laughs> and so some people read books the other way so you, sh- you know yeah you're right my, my yeah, fault Jesse specified in english or one of the yeah, western no, romance that's, languages that's Sorry, languages. no that's funny, that's yeah. actually Talking that's a good point though arabic japanese chinese mm-hmm. yeah might be i don't know if anybody way. reads like from up to from down to up mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. never mind i Sorry. bet somebody does um somebody does and so um yeah, and so like, and then the the there there'll be neutral ones like so positive. Well, I guess that answers my question. You know, like neutral kind of stuff. <laughs> and positivity is basically on the left hand of the axis, mm-hmm. and less positivity. So we're going more to neutral. Then yeah, and then t- and towards negative, which are uh, which are you know like oh, that's unfortunate. Like that's a little more. Even negative. though if you were looking at a standard axis, the negative numbers would be on the left side. Of we're the talking about literal, right li- like in, I j- explained this already at the beginning. I'm not arguing tune- with it. I'm just uh, illustrating yeah. that this is partly fascinating because it is the it's, mirror image of what one might expect. It's conceptually, it's conceptually positive, not like in terms of numbers. Is it positive? Because you like to start out. On the positive note, it's just you want to start your day. I it's hard to the find positive notes. It's hard to find sounds uh, like when you have all these sounds. Sometimes it's hard to find them, so I just try to organize them in general conception. And uh-huh. what the reason I po- chose positive over negative first, it was arbitrary. It's just like mm. yeah, you go from yes to no. Why not start yes? Why not start with yes? You know why not start with yes? Start every day with yes. <laughs> yeah, and so and then it ends. That's going to be your political slogan. <laughs> why not start with yes? Wake up, yes. And then <laughs> so right, and then it goes to negative like you know you. You're, that's unfortunate and then even more negative than that would be like you're a dickhole you know that would be super negative and that, right right what about that, what about yeah. chief o'brien and What's then that? well and then right at the very end of it uh would go um uh no that's the most negative is okay. no. no now after the chief o'brien that's interesting um that would probably go after because there's a little a, a couple after the negative there's the extras the questions <laughs> there's like some other dimension there's questions <laughs> like a what that goes that's just not positive <laughs> neutral or negative that's a question or like a duck that's a question yeah. so that's that's different and so uh yeah and then there's the, yeah and then there's um some general ones like uh I don't know, like Chief O'Brien would probably go after the no, but before the questions. Because right now I'm ending on questions. That's the word. Yeah. And so that's basically how I how I organize it. All right. That's been part one. All right. <laughs> yeah, right. Of how, that was really great. How Dan <laughs> organizes all this business. That was a special Christmas gift to our yeah, audience. Yeah, right. Yes, it was. very. It was a very Yuletide gift. Next week... Uh, next week Dan will talk about how he pushes on the buttons <laughs> and slides around the screen and starts freaking out every now and then when he can't find something and it's like he I starts know. shaking and go no no <laughs> a duck <laughs> yeah I know yeah I know sometimes I like I'm like looking all around and I get totally flustered and then I and then I then when I grip on too hard to that I can't just make a natural point because I'm like too focused on trying to find the thing and then I get distracted so I gotta be careful about that I, thought I, don't, he, I don't think anyone's ever known. I thought careful. he made a great point about Q, though, too, about uh, how yeah. Q is always helping out. It was, what was interesting in that episode, though, is that he also did mention, though, that like he was he wanted to join the crew, and they were like, "We and don't help directly." And, and, and yeah, and they were like, "We don't need you." And then the episode ended with Picard being like, "Okay, Q, we do need yeah. you." So there was like that going on too. Yeah. But maybe he just wants some gratitude because he's always trying to help him all the time. You know, he's like in his heart, he's trying to help him. So that would strengthen that point being like in his heart, he always wants to help him and he's sick of not getting any gratitude for it. And so he's like, well, I'm going to show you hardcore this time. So. <laughs> and and thus he did. Yeah. And to learn more about that, go ahead and listen to last week's episode, episode number 219 of the It's Got Star Trek podcast. Anytime, pal. Anytime. But, but for now... 22 minutes in or 20 oh, and change, 20, 24 minutes in. Thank you, Kaki. Uh, we will we will get on with episode 220 of the It's Got Star Trek podcast. But yes, thank you very much, Kaki. Uh, everyone go listen to the Joy of Trek podcast. And um, 
I bet he didn't expect to get that, that fulsome of an answer. <laughs> oh, I, bet he, I bet that was a satisfactory. Answer. Oh, yes, it was. And it is good for our non-Christmas special Christmas special. All right. Well, I guess that answers my question. Yeah, so uh, ho, ho, ho. let's talk about his way, the very, on the surface, very sweet, uh, underneath, very evil and sinister and horrifying <laughs> nightmare of an episode. Yeah, there was some, there was some creepiness going on in this episode. This guy's like Moriarty, but nice. Yes. Oh, okay. All right, so it's well, like, like more powerful. Than it, this, this really, I, I'm gonna just to get it out of the way, so nobody gets confused. I I do enjoy this episode. I've always enjoyed this episode, and I get what they were going at. There's a, it's meant to be a sweet kind of mm-hmm. fun episode, <laughs> but there's some things. It came right <laughs> after, um, uh, uh the, the, in the pale moonlight, right? Mm-hmm. So this is the episode after in the pale moonlight, considered one of the best episodes of Star Trek of all time. My thoughts exactly. And super intense. And so they needed a break. They needed a lighthearted thing. So here is yeah. supposedly a lighthearted. You, har- you hardly see Cisco at all. Sweet romp. Yeah, you barely it's see one, Cisco. One little scene, I think. But mm-hmm. the thing is, is if. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about this episode they is. They can't take that away from me. They can't take that away from me. They can't take that away from me. No, 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 no. They can't take that away from me. No, no, no. They can't take that away from me. No, 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 no. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yes, yes. That's why the episode's great. There's a lot that's great about the episode. That whole scene. I know you're making a point. I just want to say that scene was awesome between Odo and Cisco, and you know he's all like, "He was singing," you know, (laughs) "He was singing," (laughs) right? He's like, and um, and then at at the end, like you know, and Odo's like, "Huh, I guess it was," and 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 Cisco's just like, "Huh." Yeah, <laughs> it's like he's looking over some serious shit, like yeah, going through some like, like prof- death, professional death military roles from right. the Dominion War, right? Yeah. And then he just starts snapping. Like he's, he, I love that he's all that Cisco is like all into it. You know, there's a lot that's great in this episode, and the concept is a fun concept, <laughs> except. <sighs> When it comes down to it, it's like the story of a horrifying digital imp. <laughs> yeah. Some sort of creature, some sort of like manifestation that starts manipulating people. And also the other thing is, as sweet as it is, it's all from Odo's perspective, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the chief critiques. A lot of people have pointed this out, is that it's there's a there's it, it, Deep Space Nine maybe wasn't always as male gazy as a lot of some of the mm-hmm. other Star Trek. But sometimes the story, like Odo is, we don't think of Odo as a lascivious person, right? (laughs) But it's still, this whole story is just from his perspective and we barely know Kira's perspective at all. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's a little bit weird, but there's all this, this Vic Fontaine stuff. It's cute, but but it's really a little bit off-putting. Yeah. Mm, Very 20th century. I was thinking about how this would, how this episode compares with like Jordy's uh, hollow, um, um, holodeck program. Or, or Barkley. Or Barkley, right, right? Barkley. That was creepy too. Now here's the thing. In a lot of ways, this is more is is more creepier. It's the more it's the creepy more creep you, the bestest. You, you you may simply say hey, creepier. I know, I know. I was I was I was I, ju- I was I was playing myself. Um, you were you got played by myself by yourself. Yeah, way no, more um, creepier. Yeah, you know, in a lot of ways, this was made way more way creepier than the. Jordi you broke your own ankles. I know. What? Isn't that a phrase? You broke your you broke the ankles. You broke your own ankles. No, I don't know. Maybe is that is that a phrase now? <laughs> I think I'm gonna it, break but, your face. Don't break your ankles. No, 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 oh no. Oh no. Um, and so in a lot of ways, this was creepier than the Jordy Holog- uh, Holodeck episode with uh, what was the scientist's name? Doctor Leah Brown. Yeah, but oh. but what saves it? What saves it is that. Jordy was the creepy one in this episode. Odo was 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 um he's absolved of yes, any wrongdoing because, because it's Vic. Of, because Vic it's doing Vic. It. And that's yeah. why this episode it seems in a way creepier, but in another way yeah. more innocent. It's because he's a hologram. If Vic were not a hologram, if Vic were just some dude, holograms. <laughs> if, Vic, if Vic Fontaine were just some guy, he's no ordinary hologram. Doing, hologram. doing all these things, right? Everyone would be like, Jesus f- fucking Christ, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, okay, he can jump. He can jump holodecks. He can, right. he can move around um, the com- the s- the station computer system sort of f- at will. Yeah, uh, to holograms. Which is more holograms? like holograms. It's more than what Moriarty can do, 
Moriarty's got this chip on his shoulder. This guy's like, he's like, I'm a hologram. That's how it goes. Eh." It is kind of funny that they have have this canonical uh, situation with Moriarty that that two times causes all sorts Mm -hmm. of ruckus, Mm -hmm. all manner of trouble on the flagship, on the most technologically advanced ship the in, in the fleet. And and despite Chief that- O'Brien. Despite that, what, what was the name of O'Brien's friend? I always forget his friend. You know, he's always hooking him up with this illegal shit, like, not illegal necessarily, but- like, Is it be- the same guy who made this uh, ho- big holiday Yes, program? the guy who made Felix. the- Felix. Felix. Oh. Because that, that, I think that guy's given him other other, other holodeck programs. I don't, anyway, re- I don't remember this Felix character. Maybe, well, I, 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 that's the impression I got. Maybe I-, I No, but what I'm saying is they, they brought up Felix in this episode. Yeah. I'm saying what I'm saying is I don't remember I had this question before I, I came in tonight I think he's, I think he's only I referenced he's only okay. referenced it's not a character that we got it's okay. an implied like, like cockroach it's, it's, yeah, it's a shady guy who hooks Bashir up with stuff from time to time well so this is a shady holodeck program cause like uh, yeah they, it's like I got it from a shady guy and it, by the way it's self aware just like Moriarty yeah right so okay so first of all there was the scene at the beginning where he was talking about like you know he's like oh you two are married oh you miss your wife and yeah. that kind of deal and so on the one hand you could be like wow that's really intuitive and perceptive but couldn't you just say like well it's the it's it's in the computer. The computer probably knows all that shit anyway. So couldn't they just say that the, couldn't you just say that the, the, the information was being fed into Vic from the computer and it wasn't like Vic's character that was figuring it out because he's a smarter holo program? Yeah. He, do you think, or do you think he actually was able to use computer logic to figure out that they were, or do you think he just grabbed like their data files right. from like that exist about? I think there was some data file grabbing. I yeah. think there's probably already some hollow deck program of Kira that exists. That, that, yeah, uh, from that, our that, man Bashir. That, that Clark made. Yeah, and, our man uh, Bashir. Yeah, which we even discuss, there's, there's we discussed, all that stuff. Yeah, too. they mentioned the yeah. Russian accent. We oh. discussed that in episode 103 of these we, guys. We did. Uh, about that part, this brings this this is related. Vic says, do you know how difficult it was for me to get a holographic image of Major Kira? Lucky for you, Julian used her image in one of his spy programs, yes. though it did take me an hour to get rid of the Russian yes. accent. Now- That's from our man Bashir. Yes, I, right. Uh, but uh, like, like, unpack that for a minute. Um. What does Her it ghost is left in there? What what does it mean for Vic to take an hour to do something? He's a hologram. Oh, yeah. That's a good He's point. Like, it's yeah. like an eternity. It's an infinity for us. Yeah, like <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It's like couldn't they just like okay? So this bring it brings a, a question mm. in my mind: is is this just part of like the holodeck? deception or is it like was the holodeck deception that sounds like an excellent novel to read on an airplane like is, he's saying it takes wanna, an hour but it only takes like a wanna, few minutes wanna, and he's goofing off the rest of the time I want a yeah, 350 right. page paperback <laughs> with a t- with the cover that says the holodeck deception and it's got like a, a, a the, like the the a silhouette of a Cardassian with a with a fedora on you know, <laughs> he's looking back under a street light my thoughts exactly um, noir. so okay yeah. so so when he was looking for those um uh the the Kira and teaching her not to have a Russian accent. Do you think it was really those two sub programs or those processes or, or those blip blops? The, 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 were they two like software things interacting like really in the background somewhere or did the, or, or, or did Vic make a, couldn't Vic just make a copy of himself and do it like right away? Couldn't he just yeah. make, couldn't he make a program if he can jump right. between programs? Couldn't he just make her change? Like, or do you think that yeah. the holo, did you, or do you think the holographs, the holograms, <laughs> Holograms. holograms. Do you think they? Do you think the holograms actually, in real time, s- stood in the in, stood in memory in the computer, processing with each other as right. if they were in character? All right. All right. Yeah, do you this, see what I'm saying? Uh, this this is a very good question. But do well, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's gotten you a bit worked are, up. Are you, they are they in character or are they just the computer? I, is he is he just <laughs> lying? I don't see is how he, an accent programming is something that you have to clean up. You just you know you just turn it on and or off. You just say give her the American accent, give her the Russian yeah. accent. Right. He's a computer, so he. Can just program it to do whatever he wants. It's yeah, just right. like, all in the end, exactly. all it is is the computer programming yeah. itself. But it's also like it's more relatable to have. I know, but act. and like, so that's why like I was wondering like if, if maybe it's all just a deception that they're not that he didn't actually or take it's just a literary like he didn't actually thing. take an hour yeah, to right. teach her. Yeah. It was just Vic deceiving yeah. us. He's yeah. a poet. Wow. Or was he or did, sings, he or, sings songs? Or did the computer create these two other programs yeah. to make and make them battle each other for the computer's amusement? It's a it's an amazing question you have, Dan. Uh, we'll we'll attempt to <laughs> get it let's a, save to it get at an answer to that question after a very very brief break. Why? How's that sound? Well, Why? Know, How we, brief? We gotta take a break every now and then. What's that supposed to mean? It's good. To, it's just good to reset reset our brain, reset our, our thinking. It helps the listeners calm down for a brief moment so they can also reset their brains. They won't. Oh, they don't want to get too excited. We find that people can endure us slightly longer 
if we in interject these these brief breaks about every 30 minutes or so. You don't have to be an Einstein to clue into any of that. <laughs> an Einstein, that's like being a Dracula. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, we will be right back. Ah! <laughs> 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 can, we, can we can we can we come yeah. back then? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're back. Are you telling me that you discussed your love life with a hologram? Hologram. We're back. Merry Christmas. <laughs> no, your uh, basic heuristic, you fully celebrate? interactive hologram. Hologram. Holograms fully if interactive. If you're just spending in. time in a hollow suite. If you're just doing sabotage. In, we've, Holograms. We've now. Okay. So here's the situation. We just gotta we gotta make it a mission. Uh, Jesse and I accidentally made some Sazerax. Uh oh. There was no accident about it. <laughs> no, what I mean by accidentally is we were all getting settled down, ready to podcast, and oh, all of a I sudden see. Jesse was like, "Hey, you know, I see you that Sazerac uh, uh, rye. That rye, would you, would you? Can I have some of that?" And I was like, "Yeah." Yeah. And, you I, and then I was like, "I got some absinthe. I was like, "You know, I got some absinthe." If you want to make a Sazerac, you two lovebirds can live without me. I trust. And Jesse was all like, "Well, you gotta have bitters." And uh, and it turned out. Oh well, you were like, "Isn't there bitters?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, oh, yeah I there turned is. out. I turned but out I the had weird some... kind of bitters." Well, and that's I, for you too. But I had them in the back of the back of the closet. You got there. the standard bitters, which you can also use. And then we and then, and then Jesse pulls out a fucking mandarin. I got some oranges. I had bon to, I had to root around for our uh, I like my fruit. Our uh, what do you call it? Zester. Yes, uh, that took a bit of doing. Anyway, long Whatever story short. Whatever makes you happy. Uh, back at the ranch. And he has ice, too. Uh, Jesse and I accidentally made Sazerax. And so we're feeling very festive. He made a big one. Hard a Dan's feeling festive because it's just, that's how Dan is every single day. Mm -hmm. It's good being Dan. He's full of fest. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, well, okay. What before, does that even mean? before we continue with our discussion, let's have our next little bit of Christmas merriment. Uh, holiday merriment. No, this is Christmas merriment. I think it's fair to call it Christmas merriment. Uh, just another funny thing that I found online. Hey, fellow geeks and geekettes, it's holiday time, and you know what that means. All right. Yep, holiday music. If you're a Star Trek fan, then I have something just for this you. from 15 years it's ago. It's called Merry oh. Trekmas, a 14-song oh, compilation of holiday music merged with Star Trek lyrics. And the best part is it's completely free. Oh. Yep, you heard right. It's Visit the Merry Trekmas <laughs> site at www.christrocks.com. Christ Rocks. Christ Rocks. Merry Trekmas. Christ em ups. And download the whole album, <laughs> plus the CD artwork, labels, and a special making of podcast with an alternate version of one of the songs and a very special treat. That's Here's amazing. Like Jean-Luc the Bald Head Captain. Jean-Luc the Bald Head Captain. <laughs> Had a very shiny Oh, head. God. <laughs> oh, and no. if you ever heard him, <laughs> make it so is what he said. Make it so. We no. warp you no. a Merry Christmas. We warp you a Merry Christmas. No, no. We warp no, no. you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> we warp you a Merry Christmas and a Kala New Year. Uh, no, so no. A hairy little creature. No, no. A hairy little creature. He's talking about tribbles. Let your tribbles make all I want for Christmas. Oh, all I want for Christmas is to join Starfleet. Yeah, to join Starfleet. Oh, to join Starfleet. Uh, Away team with Phaser. The pink future planet is searched by the guys. The men with the red shirts pray that they won't no. die <laughs> 12 days of Starfleet and more and now we know how no. you organize this on the first day of no. Christmas Starfleet gave to me no. an honorary <laughs> academy degree no. visit <laughs> www.christrocks.com slash Merry Trekmas and listen or download your geeky holiday music just in time no. to celebrate with your family and friends no. Merry Trekmas and a kapla new year mm. new year
No, no. <laughs> Even as a, that's what she said, Jack. The one with that was the, from like 2008. The one not, with the one, bad. the one with Worf reminded me of the Muppets. John Denver was, <laughs> and the Muppets sing Christmas carols. It's uh, John Den yeah. John Denver and that's the great, Muppets. That's great, man. Yeah, and it was and it was. I, I mean, used to have the record. And of the, that. yeah, I did too. And the We wish you a merry Christmas. It was like one of those like uh, they were singing the figgy pudding part and animals all going like won't go, won't go. Yeah, it sounded and, like Worf. And Miss Piggy thought they said piggy pudding, and she oh, was right. like piggy pudding. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, pitch like that. Yeah, right. So no, I've got to no, say, I, I like the first one, like the recording you played prior to uh, this, yeah, much yeah. better than that. That this uh, one yeah, was yeah. this one was that more was, effort, yeah. Um, yeah. And a little cheesier because it <sighs> was a little, you know, definitely. pulling off song parodies like that is a difficult task. Somehow Weird Al does it, but like I don't not It's hard. It's hard to make it not make me want to. Just like fucking. Well, kill I tried going to the website. Like, have you ever heard of the Capitol Steps? Like, I can't take. Oh, yeah, I can't yeah, take yeah. that no, shit. No, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Weird Al is the only one that can really. I mean, if you're into the uh, Capitol Steps, great. You I, I, I'm, I'm, you, I'm not trying to say you're into shit, but like, I can't take that <laughs> stuff. The uh, Weird Al's like a special. The website. Yeah, he's, I went, he's good. I went to the website ChristRocks.com. It appears to be defunct. So <laughs> I was really looking forward to seeing because it well, said there was. I wanted to see because it, it said all for the, the tracks were there. Um. So unfortunately, Christ rocks. I, I I hate to be announcing this on Christmas Day of all days. Mm. Uh, Christ you, rocks. What do you do? You, do you know what Jesus would say on 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 the first Christmas Day if he heard that Christ rocks? The cat can swing. No, I was gonna say he'd be all like. <laughs> he'd be all like, wham, wham, right? Because <laughs> he'd be a baby. Yeah. yeah, but that's okay. It's okay to be a baby. It's okay. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Uh yeah all right anyway so that was a little bit of little bit um, of little bit of silliness. Yep. Speaking of silliness, uh, getting back to the show. His Odo. Way. So Odo. So one thing we learn about Odo is, Odo is that he has a stern exterior, but on the inside he's really just a bunch of goo. Oh, <laughs> he's all mushy. Inside. I was like, where are you going with this? And that's genius. <laughs> Genius. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> oh wait, yeah. goo man! I I wish you had told me you were gonna do that. I would have played one of these like. Uh... Oh, no, no, <laughs> yeah. that's no good. Oh, gonna, see, I don't know where the good one is. What's a goo one? Chief O'Brien. No, that's just a, that's a depressing. How about one. this? <laughs> he can make himself just look like tuxedo. What about know. this? <laughs> no, oh, man, man, where all the good ones go? You She's know? a hologram, auto generator. Oh, she's a hologram. Don't you feel a little silly being here in a hollow suite? Auto generator. Hollow generator. No, that's silly. Okay. Complicated to leave a hollow suite? Hologram. All right. What were we saying? Yes, Odo is full of goo. Chief O'Brien. Odo's oh, full of goo. Oh, Odo's full of goo. Chief O'Brien. Um. There was a little bit of Chief O'Brien in this. Episode. You we before the break we were talking yeah. about the whole what's the deal with Vic Fontaine sort of thing. Oh. Mm -hmm. And. I was just going to comment that you have to sort of first define which angle you're going to come at it from. Uh, from the writing angle, it's yes, of course, they're just making a relatable character. Uh, does, don't worry too much about the technical aspects or the moral implications. It was of this something they, they planned early on. They were like, we're going to do a Vegas episode. Yeah. And, and they like, wanted to have, they, they, they tried to get Frank Sinatra Jr. and yeah, Robert Goulet and a yeah, bunch of other people. Yeah. James Darren, they got. So that's the one angle. The in-universe angle does get more interesting because mm -hmm. it's it's, but it's also getting into those complicated philosophical debates that are going on right now about how would you define a conscious entity, mm -hmm. because you could have an entity, a, a simulated entity, behaving in all ways identical to a conscious entity, and yet you would not necessarily be able to know whether or not it was truly conscious or just mimicking consciousness that's of course what people are dealing with with the uh open ai chat gpt and all that other fun stuff she's a hologram <laughs> holograms <laughs> yeah so that gets more complicated mm -hmm. so unless you just want to say he is the devil he is some <laughs> form of devil it, this the seriously all of the, the the questions you were asking before and the and the examples you were going through over the what complicates the mm -hmm. existence of vic fontaine right. they're all 100 percent correct mm -hmm. they're the easiest way to get rid of them is to say that he is a he's a some sort of demon yeah. he's like a demon not right. necessarily an evil demon but some sort no, of no. some sort of supernatural like a sprite or a leprechaun like, like a leprechaun like a fairy or yes something. like a like a fairy with the a, with the a and the e yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. not an a and an i well he was or an e and a y <laughs> He was like, I get that he was trying to teach Odo to have some style, but like he was really just t teaching him how to lie. He taught him how to pretend yeah. to play the piano and then take then to take credit for it, so he could basically practice um, 
dating Kira by having sex with other women. <laughs> I mean, he basically said, "Like you got to practice, buddy boy." You, you know, pretend like, to pretend to play piano. That's yeah, pretend, how you get chicks. pretend to yeah, pretend to play piano <laughs> so you can lie to them and say, "Tell you to play piano," yeah. so you can have sex with them in order to have practice to have sex with the person you really love. Now, I'm not. You judging- think Otto had sex with that girl? Well, that's what the intent was. That was. Yeah. That, I, mean, I suspect that yeah. we must have had to have sex with kind so, of gooey, and like, look, sex. look, look, you know, however you want to date, date. I'm just saying it's a weird lesson to sort of, it's a weird thing to teach somebody well, like on. I, you want to date a hologram? Date a hologram. He, <laughs> he, he makes, okay. And then he gets to the next level by making like a fake, uh, a fake sexy Kira to sort of titillate him, yes, which was and, also. And it works. Yeah. And it works. And it's <laughs> yeah, weird. And that's, but, and that's the male gazy part yeah. also you were talking about is a, is it's a, it's a male gazy. It's a fuki. It's a fuki. <laughs> What do you want on your pizza? Don, no, not, not Donnie. Wait, you get a pizza with Donnie the milk Brasco. Donnie Brasco, not Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko. <laughs> <laughs> to Bill Brasky. That was an SNL <laughs> Um So yeah, and, and 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 then it leads into him lying. Like Vic is lying to Odo uh-huh. and Kira, both oh, of no. them, where Kira thinks it's a real date and, oh, no. and Odo thinks it's a hologram. Yeah, that, it, that last bit is like a Shakespearean type thing. Yeah, yeah. Now, now Odo and Kira are rightly pissed off and he was just like, look, there was no other way it's going to happen. But man, like... That, you're right. That's a scary ass hologram. That's gonna like fuck with your life. If he has that kind of power, yeah. what if he's gonna Moriarty your ass instead? Which you can, well, yeah. did. you can watch this episode from multiple different angles, but the two main angles are: this is a cute, sweet sitcommy ish. That's what type it was tale, supposed to. That's what it was trying to or portray. It's 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 revealing the the horrific entrenchment of of uh, the patriarchal society <laughs> a sexist patriarchal society uh, into the 24th century that favors uh, uh duplicity yeah. and sinisterness and trickery mm-hmm. uh and sex dollary uh, if that's a term if not I'm coining it and I've trademarked it Good. and and this this hol- holodeck program exists that can do all, all this stuff but somehow is not malicious. He's helping everybody out. Yeah, and that's hey, what we're he's, lucky. He's, 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 a, do, he's a nice he's, guy. And he's singing songs and he's an entertainer. Well, Felix could have programmed something much more, you know, malicious. Yeah, he like he's to. just programmed that way, but he but he can still do all this but stuff. It just it just and it's wild. Now, man. like I guess in the end it worked, but like to what end? I don't know because what if like it hadn't, because he never what actually, if it hadn't he, worked because he never yeah what if it hadn't worked? Can you imagine that would have been terrible. Maybe it didn't, but. He like, didn't have to do much to make it work, like you know. Well, I mean, Odo like never ended up, you know, getting up the courage to tell her on her own. So he kind of tricked him into revealing like mm-hmm. something that really, in the end, it would have been better if he had some sort of um, agency over it. He didn't have agency, even though he was speaking those words without knowing who he was speaking to. There's no agency in that, and yeah, so yeah, because like, the title of this episode is his way, right. and that refers to Vic's way, right? right. That's yeah. what this, you know, because like, <laughs> it's of course a joke on the Sinatra my song way, "My Way," yeah. Yeah. but that's not what Odo is doing. Mm-hmm. Odo is doing what the other guy is telling him to do he's, right. he's doing it his way and and vic, not the odo style of flirting and ultimately vic is teaching odo to be someone he's not and then tricks him into revealing or at least that, that's one potential interpretation because I, mean, I do think you could argue that all the stuff that you said being said that like I, why you can watch this episode from a few different angles is because i do think you could argue is like oh well we know o- odo has some of these performative things in him and stuff true. and, and you know, so this is a, f- a way of opening them and, up a little and, and bit. I, and I actually, yeah, and I, oh, I, yeah. I briefly did mention earlier that, like, yeah, it's it's teaching Odo to have some style, to embrace his stuff, and be proud of himself. But he was doing it through things that Odo doesn't do. Yes. That's the problem. And, like, I guess he was just showing him, like, this is what it was it, very much outside the bucket. Mm. Get it? Because it's Odo. Oh, I get oh, it. Oh, yeah. Man. Would you say it's thinking be- outside the would bucket? You say, would you say Vic's um, um, deceptive behavior was beyond the pale? Would you say ah. <laughs> that's a good one too? Uh, see, that, that's the, you've beaten me because I was about to make a Vicks Vapo Rub joke. Oh, but your joke about the pale is better because I think you know I said bucket and you went with a synonym pale, uh, uh, which is excellent. That's how that's how you build uh, humorous jokes, but which is all, itself a play on words because the original yes. meaning of that is exactly not pale. It's a pun. Yes, it's, it's a, a pun. It's a total and pun. It's a, He's and punning it's, all over the it's place. It's a synonymic. Pun. It's an anonymic pun. <laughs> and that's that's good podcasting is what Hell I'm trying yeah. to get at, Dan. Good yeah. job. As always. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I expect nothing less from Dan. But yes, um, but yes his, his way is so, Vic's way. So yeah. Anyway, so yeah, he could have. He's the sneaky light. Bulb. I guess the point is, is is to say, look, if you just this is an example of what you could feel like if you just embraced yourself. But they never really spoke that message. In the end, like like I said, there was no agency of him revealing how he felt to Kira on his own accord. Yeah. So that loses some of the effect because like you want someone to be able to be comfortable enough with themselves to to be able to do that. I guess ideally, but I guess the idea is maybe because. He got tricked into it. He knows the world won't end as a result. Maybe that'll give him more confidence in the future. I don't know. It was it's also a little not bit a, confusing. It's, uh, they're, they're relying. But you're right. It was supposed to be a sweet episode. I get that. But it was there's some weird stuff. Look, we've discussed yeah. this before, how Star Trek, and Star Trek's not alone in this, by the way. Lots of television programs, particularly in the 70s, 80s, 90s, et cetera, when they were churning out tons of episodes per year, a lot of- TV programs would, would will use shortcuts. They will use thematic uh, or cultural shortcuts by us knowing certain things or having certain assumptions that we carry into an episode if they use certain story structures, right? And the story structure of the shy guy who has to be tricked into asking the cheerleader on the date or whatever, that's something we understand. And so mm. that's a lot of the heavy lifting is being done that by the structure of the story mm. there. It's also what makes the story a little weird because they're relying on some sort of like Donna Reed era, <laughs> like, mm. like structures as opposed to a, a more modern. Yeah. Know? That is also you weird know? that like, yeah, the, the, the time, the time, the, time, the era, they it's sort a of little bit of an old, they, it's the 1960s club, a 1960s sitcom plot really. Uh, and, and that's transmuted into a dramatic, a lighthearted but dramatic hour-long tale. It's stretched out a little bit. Catch you later, baby. Um, baby. Look, Pally. Pally. <laughs> Look, Pally. Pally. Stay with me, Pally. Pally. Oh, by the way, talking about being stretched out a little bit, that um, uh, the "Come Fly with Me" segment, right? That went on a really long time. Yeah. yeah. Come fly with me. Let's take off to Peru. Do you think we can get a, a takedown from, from playing these clips? No, no, this I don't think so. This is one of those episodes of Star Trek. And I mean, mm. they never take it down anyway. Oh, that's they might good. Do, they might do a demonetization, but ha-ha, we don't ah, monetize we don't it. We're worthless. <laughs> Come fly with me. So I was watching that, and, and like halfway through that Come clip, I was like... I was like, this is th this clip is longer than one of Dan's sound clip manias. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, right. regular listeners will know. Like sometimes Dan goes into sort of a fugue state. Yeah. There's nothing Jesse and I can do about it. We try to physically restrain it. <laughs> I was like listening. I was watching that come fly with me. I was like, they're doing the whole fucking song. <laughs> Doing like a fairly slow arrangement of the entire song. Yeah, like people were doing solos and shit. Jay Chataway, by all accounts, um, Jay Chataway had them had tried to get as many of like the actual musicians on stage as possible, oh. not like extras playing musicians, which is I thought really cool. Jay Chataway. He did a he, Jay Chataway always did a good job with the music in Deep Space Nine. I'm feeling it. It's about that time. I could tell she was gonna do. You can always tell when somebody's gonna do Fever. Like it always, Fever. It's like the only song that anybody starts that. Doobie way. Doobie. Fever like my boo baby boo. Fever. Catch you later, baby. Most, most songs. <laughs> that line. Is, um. Yeah. The the songs they the songs they played. I got the ones that I was able to spot. They're uh, You're Nobody Till Somebody Loves You. Which is yeah. a depressing song. Mm -hmm. uh, Come Fly With Me, of course. Um, That's about doing drugs, I presume. Yeah, that that, that tracks. Um, Odo, so it's interesting. In the closed captioning, Odo, it says they're humming. The name of the song they're humming in the closed captioning says that he's humming the song, They Can't Take they can't take That Away From Me. But in the transcription on Chakotea.net, it says that song is The Way You Wear Your Hat. So they disagree. Ooh, yeah. So, um, um, did you then follow up and do a little additional research to determine which was the correct version? No, that would have been a good idea. Uh, that would have been a good way to end that part. Is that a... <laughs> With some closure. Well, you know. <laughs> is that a Cole Porter or some, like a Gershwin? Or was it some good podcasting earlier? Who wrote, who wrote earlier? that one? Who wrote that song? Me can't take that away from me. They can't from take me. that away from me. Or somebody completely. They can't take that away from me. <laughs> I like how Odo like was all <laughs> off key and not singing well. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, Hollow Lola Kira uh, sings "Fever." Hollow Lola, the fever that fever, fever. song. Fever. Moonlight 
lights up the night. The first time I heard that song was, uh, I think it was, I was watch, I, I used to watch Pee Wee's Playhouse. Ah. And so we went to the video store and I rented what I thought was Pee Wee's Playhouse because it was Paul Rubens' Pee Wee Herman, but it was his stage but, show, oh, which is, which is, it's a Gershwin, it's different. which is Pee Wee's Playhouse characters. I thought you got the porn version, which was Pee Pee's Fuckhouse. Oh no, I wish though. But my dad was like, that's rated R. You can't see that. And then I was like, oh dad, I want to see him fuck. And he's like, no son. <laughs> Not until you're older. <laughs> um, and so, no, it was his stage show, where, which it's the same characters. He's Pee Wee Herman, but it's like adult themed or something. Yeah, well, that's what he started. The Sun yeah, lights that, that's up how it was. the daytime. Moon lights up the night. So and, and one of the characters sang that song. And yeah, that's and that's funny how that began. His character began kind of dirty and then it turned over to uh, a really good movie. And then... Uh, a kid's show. Uh, then there was like, I've got you under my skin. And then they do come fly with Oh, and the I've got you under my skin is when uh, uh, Odo and Kira, who K Odo thinks is fake Kira, but is right. actually real Kira, mm -hmm. are having dinner together without any other diners around. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Vic Fontaine is singing, I've got you under my skin and staring at them <laughs> yeah. <And> unblinkingly, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unblinkingly staring at a, the lone couple <laughs> yeah. in a fairly dark restaurant. Yeah. And then um, Odo says, it would be difficult for you to leave the hollow suite. Why? Uh... The part where he's, when he says it would be difficult for you to leave the hollow suite, doesn't it sound like his next words are going to be like, because I'm going to rip you up in my basement or something uh, like that? Right. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I don't know about There's that. There's an implication of violence. Again, yes. there are multiple interpretations one could take. Yeah. Um, you're right. There are. Um, I actually had the quote here, and I'm not able to find it. Um, what, what good are you? Come on, man? Dan. I don't know. I Jesse, what are we going to do with this guy? I don't know. Kick him to the curb. I don't know. We can just keep sipping on our Sazeracs. Um, while, this, <laughs> while, this guy, while this guy looks up some quote, I don't know what he's referencing. Hey, Dan. What's, Dan, what's was all like, Dan was all like, uh, I had the quote right here, but I don't know what, what he was talking about. Oh, mm. yeah. He, she says, are you embarrassed to be seen with me? And he goes, no, no. I meant it would be difficult for you to leave the hollow suite. She says, why? Yeah. This is like, because you'll be dead soon because I'm going to kill you. Doesn't that sound like <laughs> kind of what it is? Because like, I would never have thought. <laughs> That, that's not the, you know, it's not the thing that oh. comes to mind, Dan. You're, you know. Well, don't, that's what people say when they're being sinister. Okay, it's like Dan. They're, there's like, well, I think it'd be kind of kind of difficult for you to leave here. Why is that? It's because because I'm gonna I, tie uh, you up in my basement. Are you? Okay. I don't know anybody sinister. Do you? So, um, just, Jesse, notice I keep I keep saying Dan a lot right now. Just I always <laughs> want to make it clear to the audience. Is that like uh, spam they, a lot? No, just just I want them to, to clearly differentiate. Who's got the kooky views here? The kooky uh, views. Kooky, kooky views. The kooky views. Dan's got a classic case of kooky views. <laughs> and then Kira, and then Kira is like, is that what you think? As if like, I couldn't, that line was weird because she goes, is that what you think that, you know, imp implying I'm a hologram. You think I'm a hologram. It's mm. like, she sounded offended when she should have just sounded confused because like, 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 is that what you think? I'm a hog. She said it as if he said, like, you're a prude or you're a you're a you're a flippity gibbet or something like that. A she's flippity like, gibbet. And and, and if, if she was like, is that what you think? See, that's the way she delivered the line mm -hmm. as if it, he was insulting her or judging her. But he just said, you're a hologram. She should have yeah. been like, is that what you think? Like, as in, why would that's confusing? So, okay. so the del her delivery was wrong, because if I came up to you, Patrick, and said, uh, you're a hologram, would you be offended by that? No. You'd be confused by yeah, that. Yeah, I'd be confused mm. by that. Thank you. Holograms. Did I say it right? <laughs> yeah, you okay, did. Okay, good, thank you. <laughs> you did, you I said it right. I was confused for a second, but you, then you, I think I got it. Yeah, it. or it if you're like, you're not a hologram. <laughs> yeah. Because you were looking at, me all, you were looking at me all sternly. Jesse, 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 you're a hologram, right? What? Yeah, see? <laughs> I'm confused. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's the proper response. That's a confusing yeah. statement, sir. A what? Yeah. A what? A what? Um, a, oh, a duck. But I, I have a, I have a feeling that the transcript was probably right about the song title. At the top, it had a note, a transcriber's note. I can't be bothered to type out the lyrics to Vic's songs. I can recommend the CD. This one's from the heart. If you want to listen yeah, to them, that's Peggy... Vic Fontaine recorded all those. Not oh, Vic Fontaine. And uh, James Darren. And she James says Darren. Peggy Lee does the best version of Fever, in my opinion. So I have, a, I feel like this person might, like the, might know the best, better. The best known version. Know better than the than the uh, closed captioning. Word yeah. For some reason. I mean, because this person I, obviously I, loves Star Trek, and the closed captioning could have been done by okay. anyone. So Dan, here's the deal. I don't disagree with you. I think that your uh, evidence and logic. Uh, supports a strong probability 
that the title that the person who wrote the Chakotea.net mm-hmm. uh, transcript for this episode, I do agree that there's a strong probability that they are right. You've convinced me that <laughs> probably they're right. Now, they can't take <laughs> that away from me. And I don't want to take that away from you. I, I do want to, in addition. You sound like you're about to be like, you're, 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 you have that look and tone to your voice. You're like, Dan, yes. <laughs> Just, but, but I got to remind you of something, Dan. It's not a reminder. But I've got to remind you of something here, Dan. It's not a reminder because you are seemingly unaware of it. Maybe you're unaware, but maybe, <laughs> maybe. I'll just tell you this. So in the future, you won't be so embarrassed by what you just said. I just, no, no, it's not, an, it's, it's just, I just wanted to point out. I'm just trying to help you I'll make more friends because you can lose a lot of friends by saying things like that I, because you sound like a dork. I just wanted to point out that- I'm like a dork. That while, yes, we now have increased the probability that the uh, acceptable probability that this person knows what they're talking about and then thus that the title of the song is uh, 10 Crazy Hats or whatever it was. What was it? No, no. <laughs> what was it? They can't take that away from me. No, the, no. the, no, the title of the That's what the closed captioning thought. That, the I transcription that says called. the way you wear your hat. The way you wear your hat. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think about that. Dude. Uh, what? <laughs> that's, 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 that's a classic case. Of, What's that supposed to mean? That's Sazerac Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> We've, we know him around these parts. He comes around every once in a while. Sazerac the Jesse. The cat can swing. Uh, no, I was merely pointing out that while we now have more confidence in your supposition, that we could have long ago just looked this up on the internet and had ah. full 100% confidence See, from a, 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 a trusted source that we mutually I, agree is a trusted source, was, like the publisher I was or right. Wikipedia. I was right. You were going well, to end that. that's right. You were going to end that with a bit of advice. Be like, next time, well, I never, dec- I never <laughs> indicated that I was not providing advice. <laughs> well, I mean. I was definitely gearing up to provide I, advice. I was, I I'm was, saying that's what I did. <laughs> and I was calling that from the start. All right. <laughs> all right. I we could have looked in the I think all of us, including our audience, but this was, audience, have learned something tonight. But what we did um, required... We've all learned different things, slightly different things, what, but we've all learned something. What we just did required more words, though, and like if we looked it up on the internet, that would be like, oh, wait, well, is this it? I don't know. This is stupid. This, this is what the young know. people call content. Look, I, uh, <laughs> uh, My favorite version of Fever is uh, Marine Girls. Is that a punk it's, band? It's a band. Yeah, look it up. Are they mm-hmm. punk? Marine Girls. They are post-punk. Post punk. Okay. You were singing. All right. Uh, Marine Girls. Well, we'll look that up over the break because we do. It is about time to take another break. You're a hologram, too. Holograms. I, no, I'm not a hologram, Dan. <laughs> he knows he's a hologram. You know what? I, you, I, 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 originally, I originally agreed with you. <laughs> You're I, originally, not a I originally agreed with you. <laughs> That that Kira should look more confused than angry about being accused of being a hologram, but now I'm starting to get a little aggravated. Oh, man. I can it's a, see it's how a, it's, it's a beginning ag- to wear. It's, <laughs> it's weighing heavily upon my brow. You make it sound like I'm a hologram. Mm. Hologram. 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 She's a hologram. Hologram. Holograms. All right. Well, we will be uh, back in just a moment. Okay. Is that cool? You guys cool? I'm All cool right. with that. All right. We'll be right back. No. No. All right, can we be back? Are we back? We're back. All right, we have returned. We've officially returned from uh, from the break. And what do we have here? What is this? This is the Marine Girl. Never know how much I love you. Fever. You never know how much I care. This is who Jesse described as being his favorite version of Fever. Fever that's too hard to bear. You give me fever. Yeah. When you kiss me. Snakes. Fever when you hold me tight. Snakey snakes. Fever. They all whisper. Fever all through the night. Not bad. Sunrise Sunrise up the All right, it's getting interesting. It's getting interesting. Up the night. Hey, well <laughs> that done. wasn't that wasn't part of it. But they when they when they do it when they say fever they like wisp they whisper it when they, you know when everybody anybody does fever that's like the you know the yeah. you know that's the, yeah, the I like loud that part. Version. I like yeah, that, that version. I like that. That was pretty slick. All right. Um, okay, now we are back from break. So before hello, we, hello, well, hello. Hey, long time no see. Hey, Pally, how's it going? Hey. It's time to have some fun. It is, and by fun, I bet you mean more Star Trek Christmas parodies. We're really not here to talk about Vic, are we? 
Uh, no, we aren't. We're here to talk about uh, Mr. Spock, who in some corners is considered to be quite the mean one. Great. You're a mean one, <laughs> Mr. Spock. <laughs> this was actually recorded by William <laughs> Shatner. Are the heel. That's not Shatner, that's you're the Forrest Kelly. Has a oh, oh, you're, you're right. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Spock. I would have gotten that. I find your arguments strewn with gaping defects in logic. <laughs> <laughs> the music is great. Star Trek You're Christmas. a human, Mr. Spock. Your heart's an empty hollow. Oh. A computer. You've got logic in your soul, <laughs> Mr. Spock. That my internal arrangement differs from yours, Doctor, <laughs> pleases me no end. <laughs> You're cold blooded, <laughs> Mr. Spock. Why, thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Assuming you call that stuff blood, you have all Sting. the personality of a routine gaseous cloud, Mr. Spock. Dr. McCoy, I believe you're enjoying all this. Indeed, Captain. I've never seen him look so happy. Shut up! (laughs) (laughs) The the video is very cute, by the way. Uh, Definitely, I'll have the link to the video. At this point in the video, McCoy and everybody's looking at each other, and then it's the Enterprise, and then... Wow. You You think I have no emotions? And they have to have that little, it goes on a little long. This little extra musical sting at the end. It's well done, but I don't know if it's necessary. Was that, the last bit. was that a different person than who made the Picard one? Yes, that, oh, thanks for reminding me. That was John C. Uh, Worsley. Mm. John C. Worsley. Not Riley. Not John C. Riley. Not John C. Riley. John C. Worsley. John C. Worsley. And As the previous liver one. Worsley. By the way, the previous one at Christ, ChristRocks.com was by Nathan Moyer. I know. <laughs> um. All right. Back okay, to, yeah, that, I was, back to Vic Fontaine, I know I said, I know demon I said, extraordinaire. I know I said it was William. Tricking people left and right. <laughs> I, know, I know I said it was Fucking with people's I, lives. I know I said I was William Shatner, but I, I would have figured it out. I, yeah. I knew it was DeForest Kelly. Yeah. Uh, but at first I got it wrong. Nobody's stressing about it, Dan. Don't worry about it. At first I was thinking good. like it was, I was thinking about Shatner's like spoken word albums yeah. or whatever where he sings It had a bit stuff. of that vibe. Yeah, at first I thought it was like, Shatner, oh, I was like, is this an extra track on his... Uh, yeah, it's a little hard to hear, too, the way it was produced. The music was a little... It was a bit music forward, uh, music. which, while I think that was overall very well done, you know, music forward production over vocals tends to indicate... I'm not going to argue it's always the true, but oftentimes it indicates to me a bit of insecurity on the part of the artist. You're going to look like a Clyde. A Harvey, you know. A square. Harvey. <laughs> Harvey. I really did like a lot of the banter in this episode. A Clyde. And especially that part at the beginning Herbert. where uh, where Vic Fontaine is like, you know what a square is, right? And, uh-huh. and O'Brien's like, one side of a cube. That's one side of a cube. <laughs> and then I Vic think that's one side of a cube. And then and then Vic Fontaine responds with like, oh, I got we I guess we got the answer to that question. <laughs> some some version of that. Well, I guess that answers my question. Exactly. There you go. Yep. That was good banter. Yeah, that was good. There was there was some good there was some good banter in this episode. Um, yeah, that's what I just said. Well, yeah, you did, and I was I was using that You're reiterating as a, my point. I'm reiterating your point to move on to a, a, a related point. This um, is a form of uh, segue, <laughs> sort of. Yeah, it's kind of like rhyming a word with it's the a same. Form of imperialism. It... <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I'm just a bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. A bee, um, a bork. Um, it it was a it was a segue in the way that when you use the same word to rhyme with the word bef- when when you rhyme two words that are the same word. Like when you rhyme thing with thing instead yeah. of thing with wing. Yeah. It's like, like that's what this, because I repeated what you said. Yeah. That's or the, bling. Or bling. Yeah. Um, the whole, um, the, uh, the the part with um, between. Uh, oh, um, between. Oh. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> the, the part between Odo and Quark. Odo. Odo and Quark. <laughs> Odo and Quark. <laughs> The whole part We're losing it. We're between losing it. Odo and Quark. Yeah, these are good Sazeracs. That was a good idea, Jesse. <laughs> I came here to talk about a missing shipment of groat clusters. <laughs> groat <laughs> clusters. Oh, no. <laughs> now, on this, no, this part. Sazerac. You've had plenty of time to arrange a 
a merger with Kira. I like the whole like Ferengi approach yeah. to relationships and love and like right. and, and stuff. That whole scene where he kept like talking about it, it was like a business transaction yeah. the whole time. Um, so I, I thought that was, and I liked how when uh, when when Odo did kiss Kira at the end, there's a shot of Quark and he's all like, hey. yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah. uh, but like I wasn't sure why Quark was helping him so much um, because to to first. He's helping Odo. He's yeah. well, are they buddies by now? Yeah, yeah. This is after the ascent. Oh, yeah. Remember, we covered the ascent. But it's even after, so, after other exa- other times that they helped each other. Here's out. two things that I don't think go along. With, I don't think it goes along with Quark's right. character. We've got one of Dan's Quark. classic lists. Although it's only a two two item list. How'd you know? But because you said There's you have a couple two things. Of things. <laughs> <laughs> you said I've got two things I'm gonna say. I've got two things that I'm gonna say. <laughs> this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, how did you know? <laughs> okay, to the audience, <laughs> the audience has to understand that Dan looks shocked. <laughs> like, like, what the, like, are you reading my fucking mind? How'd you know that? Uh, um, all right, there are two things. <laughs> so, and I'm gonna. This is not within Quark's character. Um, number one, I just mentioned he helps Odo with no known profit. There's no profit. No even even if they're friends, he still would. He's a Ferengi, you know. He wants profit. Right, There's no, yeah. He's not asking for anything in return. Number two, um, that the scene where he gave um, Bashir one warp core breach. Come right up. Did you notice that he poured the drink before Bashir asked for it and the Bashir didn't even want it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, why would he start making a drink before because the customer paid it was for it? Because Quark has an alcohol problem and he was going to drink it. That, that, okay, that, that, that could that, have been the only reason because, <laughs> yeah, like, that was true. a big involved drink with, like, yeah. some special effects and, like, it was yeah. huge. I had, one of those, I had one of those at the Star Trek experience in oh, Las shit. Vegas, Nevada, so, United States of America. What was it like? It was good. It was like a blue. It was like blue raspberry alcohol or something. Right, okay. Well, With he's dry ice. He said it's going to make dry you feel ice. good for three days. So you got your Starfleet officers. It didn't like, make me feel good for three days. You, you're going to have Starfleet officers basically drugged up on some kind of opiate mm-hmm. juice. Maybe like Ferengis for- have a different uh, reaction to alcohol. Well, they also they can they 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 have. Well, all he the, told uh, he told Bashir he was like, "This is going to make you feel good for three days." But Bashir has access to all the antagonists, so he can get the count. You know the the. You know, he can inject himself with some business to make him sober up. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of alcohol. Like binging and purging in Starfleet is is really bad news. Well, you mean bad it bad business. You mean it happens all the time? Yeah, because you can problem. just you can just like hypo spray your ass to prick your prick yourself up and then you can you, know, you can just well you do don't need to purge. You, you can then, just then you hyper spray with some other business. You just put point the transporter at your stomach and you transport. Yeah, exactly. You beam that shit out. Well, this brings me this is a legitimate segue. This brings me to my next point. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like the idea of a legitimate segue. But they only had transporter guns recently, like in Picard. Oh, is that is that true? I think so. Oh, eh. I didn't know that. I don't know. Eh. Um, Somebody else knows. So, the the question of Synthahol. The question. As it relates to hollow liquid. Because, Holo, hollow because liquid. hollow liquid, right? Hologram. Ooh, right. Well, She's a hologram. Okay. Holograms. So, food on so, the holodeck is, is it just... It's real food. It's replicated food. But... But you just use a weapon. No, 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 um, so so he says, um, the hollow liquid, he's like, this won't get you drunk, it's hollow liquid. And then that brought up a question in my mind. I was thinking, why won't it make you uh, drunk? It could either be A, because it's essentially just synthahol. Mm-hmm. And then I started wondering, well, I thought in some cases syn- synthahol can make you drunk. But that's like the unanswered question of Star Trek is, does synthahol mm-hmm. make you drunk? I think there's enough information to apply that it can do something to you. I think we've had this discussion a few times. We have. Most recently, I believe, on uh, discussing one of the... Later episodes of season four of Star Trek Lower Decks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I believe uh, with that and other bits of evidence, we came to the conclusion that, yes, you could become intoxicated. However, perhaps without any sort of hangover effects and also perhaps with uh, the ability to sober up rapidly on an as needed so, basis. Well, so Vic specific, yeah. specifically said, he's like, this won't get you drunk. It's hollow liquid, implying that all, uh, he says it's hollow. He I can't, thought, what was the, yeah, what was the he word? Was, he was just hanging out with Odo, so maybe he just made that special for Odo. There's no reason to think no, he, 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 he do that. 
he, I gotta find this line, man, because like gotta find this line. Because you like, find this line. How about this? I'm gonna play some uh, jingle bells while you do that, just to remind us oh, that oh, oh. we're talking about his way. But this is episodes landed on Christmas, Christmas Day, 2023. And you can't take that away, and you can't take that away. From us. I did find this the... This is a perfectly normal episode. Everything's fine. I, I did find the... Okay, Dan found the business, so I can pod down the Jingle Bells effects. All right. So that's not that's related to your point. That's <laughs> no, a loop, bitch. No, here's the line. Odo, uh, uh, Vic says, bottoms up. Odo says, no, I don't drink. Vic says, why am I not surprised? It's not real booze. You're in a hollow suite, remember? That implies yeah, that I agree. you're in a hollow suite, therefore yeah, it's not yeah. booze. Uh, under I, all I, circumstances. I understand what you're saying. I, just, so, it just doesn't really stress me out that much. Oh, it doesn't stress me out, but I'm saying it's 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 another piece of the puzzle. Or maybe... I think if I'm in a hollow suite, I'm drinking real drink. If I order a real drink. See, look, all I'm saying is- If I'm playing pretend, it, I'll get pretend This question- this... If the hologram gives it to you, then it's a pretend hologram. Look, look, yeah. this is, this, this, this line either helps clarify the issue or it makes it more confusing. It obfuscates it. And I argue that it obfuscates it mm. because- like I said, it could Standard either eye. it could either be Synthahol, but I think we've established it's not Synthahol because Synthahol can do something to you. He said this won't. So what I think is is that when you when you drink hollow liquid, it just evaporates in, in your throat and just goes back into the energy source. That's what I yeah, think happens. It's not uh, real. I don't yeah. think there's any reason to restrict ourselves to only that scenario. I think that's a perfectly reasonable scenario i think it's also perfectly reasonable he just doesn't like to it. think that if you're in a hologram of paris in a cafe you want coffee and you can drink an actual coffee from the rep that's replicated i think it's yes a that's, that's what thing. you would but think. no he yeah. said he specifically says yeah, you're, but you're you're implying that no, he that, says you're in a hollow has to uh, uh, apply to every single scenario and i think yes, that's it does. ridiculous because he's saying because odo's worried about alcohol he's like you're in a hollow suite remember as if like you must have forgot that you're in a hollow suite because everyone knows in a hollow suite the booze doesn't have alcohol the way he said it implies right, that right. if you are in a hollow suite, you are not drinking booze. That is yeah. the logical you, and line. You, and, and you feel free to that's that's your perspective. I don't see how anyone that's not a perspective. That's that's it, that's it, that's it is called a perspective. No, it's not. That's logic. You are in a holodeck, therefore there there is no booze in the alcohol. That is logic. I think the uh, preponderance of evidence. The, there are there are there are there are math the other television part, when programs. you're when you're a math major, you take classes in logic where there's yeah. if this, then that. That's how computer programs yeah, work. I, because I it's agree. not with you. It's not a perspective with a computer program. If this, then that. If this, then that. And I will think. I think you will find. If e you're in a hollow suite, then I, you are not drinking. I think booze. you will find that even under the rules of formal logic. Yes, you formal can. Formal constrained logic. That okay. There is nothing about the scenario described that that renders it exclusive. It yes, it does. It no, it does not necessarily it does. render it. Exclusive. You're in a hollow suite. If you're in a hollow suite. There, you're in a hollow suite, therefore your booze has and no also, alcohol. And also, I if he said I live in reality, uh, which sometimes does not comport with uh, constrained logical equations. What? And, what? I didn't even know what is that supposed to mean. Logic does have place in reality because it, yeah, that's what that's how computer programs are written, but, which we use every I'm, day. I'm 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 going to. You, you can feel free to call me silly and foolish, but in my head canon, if I go into a holodeck. I can drink a cup of coffee. I can drink a glass of beer, even if it's a fake beer, uh, and it'll feel like such. It'll be as as it'll be like I'm getting it out of the replicator. There's I would, no reason for I that would, not to be. The I case. would. I would. Well, but that's not what the words say. And I it, I'm ignoring the creepy demon guy who is manipulating everybody. I who would, says a one-off thing. It's going to completely ruin the concept of all holidays. The only way and make it basically a pointless the only, exercise. The only way I would believe you is with that is that he's lying. That's another possibility. Now, I, if now if he had said you're in my hollow suite, remember, therefore there's no booze. That would open it up to say, well, other hollow suites could have it, but my program okay. doesn't have it. See, right. I know there's a, there's a few Star Trek writers that listen to us, and, and this is a good example. Yeah. You have to be very careful with how you phrase these things because you cause all sorts of co consternation. And I'm conflict no, between it's not. People. No, I'm well, okay, because, between us. Yeah, yes. I'm gonna say like I'm not like worried about this line. It doesn't keep me up at night. <laughs> I just find it. I just I, to me to me the synthahol thing. Is is fascinating and I'm trying to piece that puzzle together like which state do the Simpsons live in if you watch a bunch of episodes they, they eliminate them Did is that what it, they settled on was Kentucky I think okay. so, I think so. Okay. Um, <laughs> that, was much, that was like way later <laughs> well there you go uh, all right. Well, let's. We do after like only have years. a little bit of time left, and so we want to make sure that we 
cover any other important topics related to this as well as any other little Chris- Christmas bonus fun times. Um, with the way Odo said cool. Was yeah, really, he did. That was really weird. I, I thought that was weird, too. It made me uncomfortable. It's cool. Cool. Um, the whole scene between Kira and Dax talking about like moment of clarity. I thought yes. that scene was really bizarre too. Oh, it was kind of strange. Okay, yeah. so here's the thing. That was that was the, that, I know, that I, was where this was from. That's amazing. Because because she was because because uh, Kira was like uh, Dax was like you had another moment of clarity. Yeah. She's like two in two days, and she's like that's amazing. Uh, that, As if there was like a real thing they were no, talking. That was about. where the right. in, the English they major, were getting all excited about it. The English major and me uh, perked up because I was like, you know what that is? That's some writers being like. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. We have to somehow make Kira fall in love with Odo in two minutes. Yeah. We have no we have to create a scenario, a plausible scenario, where mm. she decides that it's reasonable for her, reasonable and not in any way creepy to for her to have been manipulated into caring for Odo. Right. Even even though we don't buy it yet. We we totally buy Odo being into Kira because it's been something that's built up over seasons. Mm-hmm. Kira has never shown anything other than uh, right. having a professional f- f- a friendship relationship with Odo and, up to And this did point. you notice that Dax knew about, like, when Dax was like, poor Odo, and Bashir yeah. was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So somehow Dax knew because she's lived, like, seven lifetimes. Yeah. She probably figured and, it out. Well, and Dax and talks with Kira all the time. <laughs> yeah, but wait, you said talk, Kira, yeah. You said Kira hadn't given any clue, though, that she was into Odo. No, because she wasn't. Because she was not into Odo until this point. My point is, no, is that the, well, but, they, the writers no, did but, not build into multiple arcs over seasons well, that's when, that she was that's, getting closer to him in a romantic That's sense. why I was saying it was confusing when she was like, poor Odo, uh, uh, Kira was hanging out with Shakar. That was before she confided in Kira in that episode. So, no, no, no. She already knew. It's, it, in this, Kira and Dax talk all the time. And, but you and said Odo, there was, you just said there was no, Kira gave no, didn't like Odo before this episode. Yeah, she didn't. Right. Well, I so, don't know what you're confused by. I'm not confused. What I'm saying is is you just said that Kira did not like Odo before this episode. Okay. Yeah. In the same episode, Dax lamented the... Uh, uh, was, yeah, because was, Dax was already aware of Odo liking Kira. This was not new. Kira knew that Odo liked her. How does... You said it was because o- o- Odo and... You said it was because Dax and Kira talk. You must... like Yes, because Kira found out from Odo previously because of the there was the whole time travel planet weirdness kira a year before learned that oda was in love with her and she straight up was like i'm sorry yeah, right, i'm just a friend yeah. so kira has been already living with kira already knows oda's into her and already said that she's like not into him romantically like that's my thoughts exactly yeah dax is also aware of that she was she was a, she was around at those events so like the, she's aware of that uh, the, it was a funny joke that Bashir is naive, continues to be naive in, even the, right. in, in the sixth season. He was like, wait, what? Um, it's love, baby. Nothing out of the, better out than of that. Love uh, is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's right um, um yeah I, yeah well, so the moment of clarity you yeah you were saying the writers so were the writers make... made that they were like we need a plausible thing mm-hmm. for her to say <laughs> and they came up with this moment of clarity nonsense yeah and and that's interesting because the they, that that i didn't thought of it from that perspective the perspective i thought of it was like basically i think was more the end result of like it's bizarre to have this conversation about moment of clarities as clarity as if like because Dax was all dramatic like I've only had like a couple in yeah. seven lifetimes and she's like you had two in two days that's crazy yeah. it's like it's sitcom it's a, but it should almost have been a joke like she when Kira was like two in two days that should have been a joke but yeah. instead Dax treated it as if it was like a miracle yeah. when right, when really the yeah. proper response for Dax should have been ha ha that's so funny yeah. you know mm-hmm. ha 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 <laughs> Classic Will Smith. Ha ha. Ha ha. Odo Kira. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so it was an implausible shift. Yeah. Uh, they're plausible great actors. Shift. They clearly have great chemistry. Um, it was also a very awkward kiss because they, I, it was cute that what they were doing was they were doing the classic uh, film noir banter where it starts out as antagonistic banter, right. uh, culminating in a passionate kiss. Right. Uh, the banter part was great. The yeah, kiss, the kiss part not so much. It was no, just, it, it, they just I don't know the brightly lit stage, the height differences, Odo's face. <laughs> I don't know. The way, there was something but, awkward about the but, whole thing. But I, but I did. I mean, I did like when Odo like jumped in. He's like, "Why do we even need to have dinner? Why don't we just kiss yes. now?" Like that was. I, I don't know that part worked. But yeah, the actual kiss was weird. And did you know there was some alien uh, standing next to him? He he all put his hand on his chest and he put his <laughs> hand on someone else's shoulder. Yeah. And was like, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> But that's when some uh, Ferengi guy like dropped his pad. Yeah. 
It was uh, that was, but that was when Court gave that look. That was a really cool. I like that look. It was the it was the conclusion to a sweet, silly, sinister, evil, horrifying <laughs> melange of of different because they they were pulling from film noir and from funny sitcoms, you know, sixties sitcoms, eighties sitcoms. They were like putting everything together <laughs> in a goofy way, along with the sci fi aspect. Again, think to yourself if this. Everything in this episode happens exactly as it did, except Vic Fontaine is not a hologram, but he's just some guy. Hologram. If he's just some fella, some then- space creep. Some space <laughs> creep. You're going to be like, yeah, this is a creepy dude. Why do we let him into the station? What's going You're on? You're a hologram here? too? Holograms. It's wild. Uh, so yeah, it would be a security breach. Yes, it's like, Odo, what are you doing? And then there was oh, speaking oh, there of was... security breach. Uh, talk about Vic was talking to Odo through his like pr- professional yeah. com. I mean, we did talk exactly, about, yeah. but we did talk about in in Q who how like uh. A guy didn't seem to have carte blanche. Yeah. Carte blanche. It's French. <laughs> Arab language. It's a language yeah. of love. But it's like <laughs> but a, when... it's like a different vibe on that show. Like on 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 Deep Space Nine, like Odo is supposed to be the guy, and he's all right. stern, but he yeah. like he keeps having all these fucking breaches. Like, yeah, right. And he's just talking to him through the communication into his uh, office seemed unlikely. Um, yeah. Um it was crazy. It was crazy. There was something I was going to say. Man, no. What were, you just, what were you just What were you, you just saying? You don't say things. Well, I was going to say that early on in the episode, uh, uh, there's that cute scene. It's, direct, it's, it's very interesting how it's directed where uh, Bashir and O'Brien are talking about Vic. Chief and, O'Brien? And, and Bashir is talking about how Vic helped him with some advice about dating so, Ensign. What's her name? <laughs> are you telling me that you discussed your love life with a hologram? Holograms? And in the background, Odo is blurry, out of focus in the background, just spying on these guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out I'm gonna like uh I'm gonna spy on these guys and learn their secrets about their love life. And then of course that's what prompts him to go and, and try to use the Vic Fontaine program. And of course, not to start a whole new thing, Dan, but it is mm. peculiar that you can only run one version, one copy of yeah, a hologram, right? The holodeck program instead of like multiple, holograms, multiple ones. Yeah, I know. Like, it's yeah, interesting I, constraints. But Sheer looked all bummed out, like when uh, when when uh, Quark was like, hey, "You can't go in there; it's being used." It and they're all filled up. He's like, "Oh, that's too bad." They're but yeah, they, yeah, they should be able to do multiple Vic Fontaines. I don't know why he had to keep it a secret from him. Didn't didn't you make a program? You only have one copy. What if you break uh, it? Yeah. What if you break it? It's done. You know. That's not but how then, the future but works. But then you'd have all those Vic Fontaines running around the station. Oh, yeah. Causing all sorts of mayhem. <laughs> and, you know, this is the introduction to Vic Fontaine. And it's mm. funny that it comes this late in the series because he rapidly becomes a sort of semi-regular fixture on the station. Uh, he's divisive among fans. Mm. Some fans are big fans. Mm. Some fans are not such big fans of Vic Fontaine. Well, well this episode, what uh, I don't know this for a fact that people say this, but I imagine there's people who like saw, for example, the um, Strange New World episodes with the musical mm-hmm. or something and were like, fuck this, this isn't Star Trek. This was definitely a, doing something different, something new and clever. So, um, well, um, what I was, my point I was um, gonna make is that the, the Strange New Worlds was doing something new and different with that whole musical idea, yeah. but like this sort of like corny, cheesy kind of like episode, like this, a similar, I mean, this episode, his way, is similar in a lot of yeah, in a lot of I ways, agree. you know. Like, so it's not like this new thing that Star Trek gets these cheesy, lovey, weird episodes. No. You know, I mean, TOS was doing stuff like this too. Yeah. So, I mean, if anyone sees the, the new Star Trek and 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 sees something that seem that, that looks unprofessional and silly or whatever, <laughs> like, look at. I mean, DS Nine is a pretty serious show, and yeah. like his way is a pretty yeah. silly episode. Oh yeah. You know? No, they and they Deep Space Nine was able to put in some good silliness, good humor. Uh, to, you know, sometimes better, sometimes worse. This this episode is overall enjoyable. I think in some ways it's fairly classic. Big things happen, mm-hmm. right? Uh, we learn that uh, Kira is no longer with Shakar. She starts dating Odo. It's something he's been pining. She digs Shakar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's been pi- he's been pining for Kira for quite some time. So hey, you know that's uh, it's most of the jokes are on Voyager. Uh, we, we, I don't know how to take that. <laughs> it's just the thing. I Dude, say, that the guy, that doctor, that doctor. He's such a joke. <laughs> Ensign Harry Kim never promoted. What a joke! I know, uh, what um, a joke! On his Odo's date with Kira, uh, Vic was trying to serve him some Dom Perignon. Um, 55, 1955, some yeah. oysters, Rockefeller to follow by Caesar salad, uh, Chateaubriand, and uh, cherries, Jubilee. Do you think that's all sex food? 
I know that oysters are supposed like to be sex food, right? And, and stero- champagne is like sex food. Stereotypical French food. Yeah, yeah, but oysters, Rockefeller, I don't know if those not, are yeah, not the sex food Rock, compared to just straight up oysters. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I was thinking about that. To be sexy, it's got to be all salty and gross. Yeah, you know, and like, slimy. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. The, slimy, the slimier, the better. Yeah. In terms of uh, sexiness. Oysters, Rockefeller, <laughs> you can hardly tell you're eating an oyster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's uh, all dressed up. It was mm-hmm. weird to see uh, them casually lighting up a cigarette. Uh, oh yeah, that's, that's lots of smoking. Yeah, and it, and it's funny how quickly it, it was that smoking used to be everywhere. Yeah, you know, and 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 it was very ca- common. And now, like, I used to smoke everywhere. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> you know, and I remember um, smelling cigarettes now is like shocking. I know, you know? it's, it's like weird. somebody's smoking. Where is it? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, oh, let me shit. let me go stand near that person. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. But um, so and seeing it on TV used to be all the time too. And mm. and um, you know, I don't miss that cigarette smoke situation no. you know like yeah. it's amazing how nice things can smell but um <laughs> like it's nice to be able to smell other things now, on the hol- now, now do, you think, do you think it smelled in the hologram do you think odo was smelling kira's uh cigarette hologram or lola's cigarette well well he, can, does, humans have a smell bajorans probably have a smell well i'm talking to the cigarettes the, the, the hollow cigarettes does, can odo smell things uh, he know. probably smells through his skin or something. <laughs> like a he's like a frog, he breathes. Um, through his skin. And, and this, this brings up a memory. I could have been making this up, he's but so I yucky, but right. I swear that I saw a high school performance of Pirates of Penzance, and I no no it was Greece. It I was, am the very model of a modern major general. Uh, which high school? Oh, I don't remember which high school, but I was so young. Um, Greece. Oh. It was Greece, and I swear one of the well-a, actors. Wella, wella, uh, Tell me more. Tell me more. This is the second half of the show where like does he chaotic. have a car? Um, this, mm-hmm, I, su- uh-huh, mm-hmm, uh-huh. I swear I remember one of the high school actors having a lit cigarette as a prop. I swear I remember. I believe that. it. I what believe was the it. 80s, yeah, right? yeah, that would have been the eighties. No, no, it was the eighties or nineties. We were in high school. I in wasn't. The 90s. I wasn't in high school. I oh. saw a high school performance and I was like a wee lad. Oh. Yeah. A wee lad. Yeah. <laughs> watching go, just, but you, <laughs> you were young, but you wanted they to make sure you, <laughs> you wanted to make sure to tour all the local high school establishments. No, I went to a lot of musicals growing up because my brother was in a lot of musicals. Right. Um, uh, oh, speaking of Odo's skin, at the end when Dax watches Odo and Kira make out, she gives three looks. One is like, huh, and then she's like, huh, and then she's like. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> she was thinking about she, Odo. She was always doing that stuff. Yeah, she was. She was thinking about what Odo can do. You know what I mean? Like Odo can do some stuff. Right. Odo can do some stuff. You know. Um. All right. I think that wraps it up. It's pretty terrific. Much, pretty much for this episode. Um. It was. Yeah, it's fun. It's weird. Sinister and entertaining. Uh, <laughs> all those things. Odo when, can do some. These stuff. days, nine was often wild like that. Now, um, send in your comments. Uh yeah, b- before we get to the end matter, I just I did want to play one more. There was one more also by John C. Was wor- Worsley of mm. these uh, little uh, Christmas Christmas fun times. Is it things. the best of Worsley? Uh, well, there's the best of times. There's the worst of times. We'll find out right now. You tell me what you think. <laughs> you know, Seven and Neelix, Alana and Janeway, Harriet and Harris, the Doctor, Chicote. <laughs> Do you recall the most logical crewman of all? Tuvok, the vessel's Vulcan. That a Vulcan game. Kelto. Uh, Tuvok, you ever the vessel's it, Vulcan. You would even see glow. All I can think of is that. All the other crewmen. That like Mary Dogmas album or whatever. Call. You know where the dogs <laughs> bark? Yeah. Never let Tuvok. You're in holiday programs. Jingle cats. Jingle cats. Thank you. And how the crewmen locked in. As they shouted out. Coffee first. Sorry. That was just so loud. That's so sad. That upset me. <laughs> I am dance all cringing over the corner. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> What'd you do? I hit a button and it was loud, so I tried to turn it down, and instead I made it louder. <laughs> the bells told for you, Dad. They told for you, and they told for all our friends around the world this December 25th. Because you're all listening to the episode on the day it launched. I know you are. You're good, dutiful fans. You said duty. Dutiful. You've downloaded the episode. You've huddled, uh, you've, you've hurt, scuttled away from your family. 
if you are celebrating Christmas with your family, you, you've, uh, you've you've not been, even you've not even bothered opening your presents you've yet. You've been visited by three ghosts in the night. You said I don't I have like time for presents. I've got to go listen to it's got Star Trek. You're gonna look like a Clyde. You're hiding in the guest room. You make it sound like I'm a hologram. Loud Holograms. Going on outside for far too long. Far it too would long. be difficult. For you Why to would the bells be going speed? on for that long? That's nice. crazy. If they're like testing Auto the bells. generator. Is this a classic case of testing the bells? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Dan? Have you ever had to deal with that? Man, I feel bad. I really I, test I, my bells. I I, 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 I tested all, including myself. I tested all of our bells by that like little sound snafu. That was. <laughs> I was trying to turn it down, and I turned it all the way up. <laughs> yes, I know, Dan. We were there. You want to play it again and try it again? I thought it was no, off when I turned no. it on, but it was really on when I turned no, it off. No, no, no. That, that couldn't have worked out better. <laughs> that was great. I know. That was great. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> hello. Welcome to the It's Got Star Trek podcast. This is episode 220. Now, goodbye. Of the, oh. <laughs> of the It's Got Star Trek podcast. There was there was one musical hit that was kind of a oh, musical bit. I that figured there'd be one more one, thing before we got yeah, to the social media. And, and I thought this stuff. was this is a transition music, and it goes from three to It goes to something music. like this. <laughs> Three parts. Listen to them. Ah. Mystical. Mystical. Oh, I get that little jazzy bit. It, it went from... Jay Chataway. Hey, face. You, Do sir, sleep. are a madman. That was... that. It went from DS9 to, like, Karate Kid to Vic Fontaine. <laughs> that was, uh... That was pretty wild. Yeah. I was. Uh, I enjoyed that. We maybe we should end on a Christmas tune or something. That boldly oh, went. No, we don't have any more Christmas tunes. Oh. We're just going to end on a good old classic back matter. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> back matter, which means something different in the po- podcasting world than it does in the pornography world. <laughs> uh, we uh, thank you for listening. Uh, we direct you to our website, www.itscottstartrek.com, for all your It's Got Star Trek needs. Got links and stuff over there. You can organize by series or topic, etc. You mean the adventures of? Of what? Links? No. Um, that's not what he said. That's not at all what I said. Uh, oh, do you remember the tuxedo scene where Odo turned into a tuxedo? Yeah, I, I that mentioned was, yeah. that. The, you, you mentioned that? Yeah. How did I miss that? Uh, nobody was paying attention. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jesse. You want to mention it again? He can make himself appear as a, as a man in a tuxedo. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. Like, just like he was a hologram, but he's just a shapeshifter. Holograms? Yeah, but like that scene, <laughs> if you watch that scene, it's so weird. Like yeah. the way they do the special effects because his head's like all like floating around yeah, weird. Yeah. And then the, does it his is hands, very weird. It's, it's, it's does, and and he's like, does some hand movements. Um, and at the end, at the end, when he goes like, "Whatever makes you happy," he does some finger guns to the sky too. <laughs> yeah. so, anyways, I, I, would, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention how weird that scene looked. This is a weird episode, but sort of of the podcast know. or the show of DJ's oh. Night. Both. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like to write in, write in with a comment or question, or telling us how weird this particular episode of the podcast has been. Mm, play little Tongo. As we explained already, Jesse and I accidentally made Sazerac. So play little Tongo. He actually explains things. Uh, hey but Jesse, you, you do, you, could, do you do you do you want to play little Tongo? You can write us in at feedback at itscottstartrek dot com. Uh, wonderful. Nice. You can also send us a voicemail or voice comment or audio comment, however you want, whatever term of art you prefer. Great. And, a complaint. And, and you can either do that by recording your own thing and sending it in via MP3 wave or whatever. Complaint. Or you can go to www.discussstartrek.com slash record and record up to 90 seconds of audio Lummy. 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 via that mechanism. You're terrific, and we will incorporate it into the into the show. And if it takes longer than that, is that then the hell with you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll just cut you off, or you can record your own using your own recording. He's good. Yeah, you can always do that because there's so many other ways to do that. Uh, we are also on all the social media, pretty oh. much not all of it. That's that's an overstatement. Dan's going to yell at me if I provide inaccurate information. That's what the fuck was that supposed to mean? Because we're not on TikTok. I can't say we're on all wait, social wait, media. Wait, wait, what do you mean? I'm going to get all over your case about well, it because you're very, you're buttons. particular about being. I'm. You're right. You're particular about being accurate. And I don't. Is this want to is this overstate. a throwback to the Hollow Suite uh, uh, booze no, discussion? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Okay. Interesting. Oh, you interpreted that way. Right. I um, think you guys were both right on that. Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> I mean, 
This guy, classic. It's right. a that's a uh, you know, that's a discussion for our special page. <laughs> our special <laughs> page. You mean the Patreon? Or I'm, non- sorry, I'm sorry. Yes. Are, are as Patreon, yet non-existent yes. a Patreon? Yeah. It'll look like a Clyde. The yeah. concept of a Patreon. Yeah. All, right. All right. All right. You got about as much personality as an icicle. Social media <laughs> at it's got Star Trek. Uh, if you type in at it's, it's got Star Trek, then we're there. If we're Forget not, about if, that if nothing thing. comes up, then we're not on that social media. But we're on most of the blue sky and Twitter. And if we're not Talk there. We're not there. Cranky. We're also YouTube. YouTube is another good, We're here good now. place. Lots of people listen on YouTube. Oh, what about this line? You're crazy about the broad, but you're afraid to do anything about it. Crazy about the broad. Right. You know. Then, he was he was talking was, to O'Brien. The, and about... then there was like Hey, doll face. He's like saying doll face. Hey, doll face. And then he tells the uh, Lola, he says like something, sweetheart. He goes, uh he goes, uh, Vic goes, of course she's not cured. She's a, she's a hologram. And Lola's like, what? And he's like, sweetheart, please stay out of this. He's like saying like, stay out of this woman. Is what he, cause yeah. I, I kind of sounded like what he was saying. Yeah. It's a weird misogynistic <laughs> patriarchal show. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's yes. episode. episode. It's he was saying bizarre. to O'Brien how it's okay to look as long as he doesn't touch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. That was it's kinda... like, it's, I know you miss your wife, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you can, you can think about it. You can imagine There's a lot of classy yeah. dames. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Uh, well, we'll talk more about uh, classy dames. I don't think we will. Skirts, skirts. <laughs> I think we'll avoid all of that. Let's all, avoid all of that. All oh, Quark, of that. Quark told Per, he was like, he was like, Odo, you're not even the most lovable person in this sector. It's yeah. like, that's like kind of difficult to be the most lovable yeah, person in a I fucking agree. sector. Well, they're on a space station with thousands of people. Yeah, and he's talking about the sector. He's he said really joking. And, and he's, yeah, though. he's saying like, you suck. You're not even the most lovable person in the yeah. sector. It's like, well... So fuck you. He, he like, lies. Neither are you. He loves yeah. that guy. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. He's, he's, he's lying. Well, I mean, it's hard. I'm saying there's only one lovable person in the sector, and a sector is made up of millions and of people. And it's just Quark. I mean, come on. Quark. I'm saying, like, I don't think I'm the most lovable person in the sector, but I still think I'm pretty darn lovable. I think you're very I don't lovable. think anybody would dispute that. Oh, you guys. All right. Write in at feedback at isgotstartrek.com. Subject it's line horrific. is Dan lovable, and then provide the answer. In is the, he the most lovable guy in the parsec? In the a body, bit. in the body of the email, the person who writes the most eloquent response uh, will go on a date with Dan. <laughs> bon appetit. On a platonic date with Dan to a local park. I'm good, Pally, but I'm not that good. <laughs> you can both stand around in the park. He's got a Star Trek T-shirt. Yeah, we'll give you a T-shirt, but we're not paying for airfare, so you got to make your own way here. Uh, all right. Anyway, that's much but enough silliness for this week. You get a bus um, ticket. Uh, that will do it for us uh, for Christmas Day. It will do us do it for us for 2023. We will see you next next week, which happens to be the first day of the next year. Oh, no. That great. Granted, I mean that's we'll that's see amazing. Next year. It's an arbitrary demarcation of the years. But everybody uh, goes along with it. It's socially it's time con- to have some socially fun. constructed. Most people. Go. But there is meaning that is derived from that social construction. Oh, that's unfortunate. So, or something anyway next year we'll do we'll talk to you next year uh, suck on that <laughs> catch you later baby <laughs> we'll, be, we'll see you <laughs> bye 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 Vic you're terrific great thanks doc wonderful very nice I know what you're thinking he has pretty sweet pipes for a light bulb <laughs> light bulb that's what I am right a collection of photons or force fields you know your basic heuristic fully interactive hologram he knows he's a hologram Felix designed him that way. He thought it would give him the right attitude for the era. If you're gonna work Vegas in the 60s, you better know the school. Otherwise, you're gonna look like a Clyde. A Clyde? A Harvey, you know. Harvey? A square. You know what a square is, right? That's one side of a cube. (laughs) Well, I guess that answers my question.